this is yet another request video and an interesting one. Uh, I, the guy didn't, the man who donated didn't tell me uh, whether I should keep his name private, but I, I think it's almost intuitive that given the information he's revealed that uh, that would be best. Um, but I do think it, it seems at least plausible that reading off what he wrote to me uh, would give you a little bit of background. Uh, so, no name here, but hello, Stardust. I just made a donation to you via P PayPal. I just wanted to send you something and thank you for all the work you do. I'm a 35-year-old married man with two sons. If I had found you 10 years ago, I know in my heart I would, have not have, I would not have gotten married. In my particular situation, I am forced to take measures so that in the event I am forced into a divorce situation, my finances cannot be pillaged. And in fact, I would actually come out on top financially. Many of your videos have opened my eyes to the world. I really, really enjoyed Chimeras of, uh, Chimeras of Meaning. Well, thank you for that. Anyway, as far as your video request goes, there may or may not be enough time to cover this in video, but I am covering the video, so there you go. Um, I know your videos can be a lot of work. Okay, no, I'm covering it in the video. Don't worry. My question is, how do you feel about drugs or surgical procedures that will remove the sex drive from men without altering testosterone production? Personally, I would take that pill in a heartbeat if it were made available. Yeah, this is a, an interesting idea. I hate to break it to you, sir, but, and I'll talk about why, this is physiologically impossible. Um, one reason is that testosterone is often bandied about as the uh, be-all and end-all of sex drive. It's, it's not the only hormone uh, involved. Generally speaking, at least in males, there are three primary hormones uh, involved. One, of course, is the androgenic hormone, uh, as well as anabolic hormone, testosterone. The other two ones, uh, somewhat lesser known, although one I'm sure you've heard of, is oxytocin, um, which is most famous for its pair bonding uh, function. But it also has a role in sexual motivation, and I'll get into that in a bit. And vasopressin, which might be less familiar, and vasopressin's primary role in the body is uh, to regulate the retention of water and also to constrict blood vessels. But there have been a lot of data showing that vasopressin also has a profound effect on sexual motivation and pair bonding. And I'll get into that in a bit. And these, both of these hormones, by the way, are, are neurohypophysial hormones. They're both produced in the hypothalamus. And they are very, very important for the purposes of sexual motivation as well. But let's first talk about testosterone. Now, it's an interesting idea, no doubt, but the fundamental problem with, as you had put it, with sort of separating out the, uh, the, the, the sex drive from the testosterone, it's, it's really, it's, it's simple. And I'll try to draw an analogy. The testosterone doesn't just have the properties of sexual motivation. Uh, some of the most important functions of testosterone are in protein synthesis, which is in many ways amino acid synthesis, to be more specific, um, which many, in many respects is the building block of life. So the anabolic functions of testosterone are very important. The bone density, uh, muscle muscularity maintenance. Uh, I mean, testosterone prevents muscle wasting. It's one of the reasons why synthetic testosterone is uh, administered to people who are very ill, and AIDS patients and so on and so forth, among other steroids, steroid compounds. And when you're thinking about testosterone and, and thinking about at least the idea of somehow removing... Uh, the libidinous qualities of testosterone, you know, the sexual motivation. And mind you, testosterone has very little to do with the physiological, say, erectile function. That's something else. But the motivation, you have to think of, uh, you know, a large tower standing on four legs. Now imagine what happens to that structure if, you know, you knock out that, that fourth leg or whatever leg it might be, third so you have this big tower standing on three legs, it's probably going to collapse. And I think you, in some ways you need to think about uh, the properties of testosterone in a similar fashion. That is to say, if you were to remove one leg, if you were to remove um, that one aspect, everything else collapses. Or better put, it's, it's simply not possible because all the you know, sexual libido, uh, muscle maintenance, protein, or amino acid th synthesis... Um, 
red blood cell production, very important testosterone for that. These are all core features. You can't get one without getting rid of the others. Now, there are other things you could do. Um, you, know, you could keep your testosterone uh, production and block, you definitely could block your androgen receptors, which is to say these are the receptors that effect, well, they receive, or say it's receptor, the testosterone, and they're bound to these the free flo- uh, free-flowing testosterone is bound to these receptors, and that's and without these receptors, you know, you would in theory you wouldn't have to worry about a lot of these problems because the testosterone doesn't work. No, no hormone works without the receptors, their respective respect receptors working properly. But then again, you have the same problem. You would probably would experience a lot of the symptoms of low to no testosterone production because it's kind of one and the same. Even the majority of testosterone is produced in the testes, without those androgen receptors, it's not going to really be very useful for anything. More importantly, the two other hormones uh, that I mentioned, let's uh, first talk about oxytocin. It's much better known, uh, or rather, it's yeah, it's definitely better known than vasopressin, which is important as well. And it plays a really important role in, I guess, what you call the the neurophysiology of, of intimacy, right? Uh, sexual reproduction. After ejaculation or orgasm, uh, your body tends to squirt out oxytocin. And incidentally, and of course, after um, giving, uh, giving birth, uh, breastfeeding, and, and incidentally, the, the um, etymology of uh, oxytocin is from uh, oxus, which means fast, and then uh, tokos, and this is ancient Greek, by the way, which means birth. And uh, yeah, so swift birth. The ancients knew that there was something going on with that, so hence the, the compound. So after childbirth, after lactation, breastfeeding, after sex, and this creates this, this pair bonding uh, effect. What's another thing it does, though, is it increases sexual motivation. There's evidence to suggest that, you know, because it has that effect on pair bonding, it's going to boost your desire for sex the next time, particularly with the same person. Um, it also, it also, of course, induces trust. Uh, and there, there are a lot of weird thought experiments of you know manipulating oxytocin to sucker people into different deals. Um, I mean, it's not entirely clear on what level it's working on in the sexual uh, sti- arousal or stimulation or whatever. Uh, situation, but it's it's there's some factor that's that's involved with sexual motivation. Now, backtracking then to vasopressin, I think it's it's pretty it's it's more clear rather what's going on with vasopressin. As I said, the neurohypophysial hormone gets produced in the hypothalamus, and when I say uh, it's it's responsible for uh, water retention regulation and um, constricting of the vessels. That makes sense related, of course, to erectile, erectile function if it's involved with uh, the constriction of blood vessels. And b- the other thing, as I mentioned before, uh, vasopressin has been shown many times, at least in other mammalian species, to have an effect on pair bonding, things like faithfulness, um, you know, the desire to stay together with the same person. And... This seems to be a very important for sexual motivation uh, as well. And one thing it's always important to bear in mind when it comes to endocrinology uh, of any system, especially of human beings, is the synergistic effects, uh, the synergistic effect, or rather, the are the synergistic effects. <laughs> Very few hormones operate uh, independently uh, of each other, which is to say um, vasopressin, oxytocin, testosterone are all working with each other to produce the sexual desire. Mm-hmm. A lot of hormones are only produced in large measure as uh, so-called antagonistic hormones, that is, hormones that are antagonist, opposite in a sense, uh, go down to low levels. I and mean, a classic example of this is insulin versus uh, human growth hormone. 
Uh, human growth hormone can only be secreted in large measures when the body is not producing large insulin. In order to produce that effect, you need to consume very, very few to minimal car to no carbs, and then you get lots of growth hormone. However, if you eat lots of carbs, you're suppressing um, growth hormone, and so on. And uh, there are a number of other hormones that function in a similar way. So, what I mean by sim. Uh, Synergistically, there's also that antagonist agonist. There are also hormones that are agonists of each other. That is, promoters, they promote each other mutually. So, this is actually, with all due respect, uh, something that, that belongs in the realm of, of fantasy, at least for now. I don't know what's going to happen 50 years' time. Maybe this is pure fantastical speculation on my part. They will be able to you know, go down to the molecular level and then find that little component of testosterone and the little component of those other hormones and separate them out, I don't know. This is just me wildly speculating in a totally fantastical way. But above all, I sympathize with your, your position. I mean, it is a physiological impossibility to, to isolate these, um, these products, these effects from these respective hormones. On the one hand, on the other hand, I know what it's like. I, mean, I find sex drive to be irksome and annoying more than anything else. I mean, do I masturbate? Yeah, but that's just to get out of the way, and even that I try to keep to a minimum. It's just not that interesting an activity to me. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of variation from male to male. I mean, I I have not had sex in in over two years, probably, going on something like that now. I lost count, and I don't really... It's not something that I think about very much. Uh, to me, it's a bit analogous to sort of food stuff. Uh, if I've gone for months or years without having pizza, I don't really miss it very much. I mean, I can I can visualize what it might be like uh, in terms of the, the palate. I can kind of envision that, but it's just it's just not that important. But I I see the sex drive thing as a major blockade. So if this were not just a fantastical notion, yeah, I would be all for that. You know, take the sex drive out, keep all the rest. That would be great. Um, but unfortunately, th that's just, it doesn't seem scientifically possible or viable given at least what I know about endocrinology. And I have had an amateur interest in endocrinology for a long time. Um, I don't, I'm willing to, to wager that most professional biochemists and endocrinologists would probably agree with me there. I, I don't think it's physically, physiologically possible and also because of the other hormones involved. What to do about it? I think as you get older, I'm slightly older than you. First off, you're you're going to go into andropause. Your testosterone levels are going to drop, so a lot of your libido is going to uh, drop as well to a certain extent. You're not going to be you know, the horny twenty year old you once were, or for that matter, the somewhat horny thirty five year old you once were. But that said, uh, you know, there will be some element of that uh, always and. I unfortunately don't have an answer beyond, you know, spank off, get it over with, make it a minimal time investment and just move on and get on with your day and do the things that are important to you because that's certainly not important to me. It's just an urge like urination or, or defecation, although a good dump can be worth its weight in gold sometimes, admittedly. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about that. I, I'm, I'm sorry to break the news to you, I'm, I, but this is physiologically impossible separating these functions specific functions of hormones out uh from the others this doesn't work um it's kind of an all or nothing package no it is an all or nothing package but anyway i do appreciate your donations helped a great deal and i hope at least you were informed by this and you know take at least some of it to, to mind to heart and I, I wish you good luck in your marriage, and I hopefully it doesn't come to divorce, but if it does, you know, you're well-armed, you're well-equipped, and it sounds like uh, you've girded yourself. So if war comes, uh, you shall defeat the enemy, no doubt. Until the next time, take care, and bye.